yes let m is equal to matrix sine raised to 4 theta minus 1 minus sine square theta 1 plus cos square theta cos raised to 4 theta is equal to alpha i plus beta m inverse where alpha is equal to alpha uh, alpha of theta beta equal to beta of theta are real numbers and i is the 2 by 2 identity matrix if alpha star is the minimum of the set set of all alpha theta such that theta belongs to 0 to 2 pi and beta star is the minimum of the set set of all beta of theta such that theta belongs to 0 to 2 pi then the value of alpha star plus beta star is so again this question is from je advanced 2019 so when you look at the expression we have a matrix m given all the entries of m are functions of some theta some variable theta and we have m represented as m is equal to alpha i plus beta m inverse m is equal to alpha i plus beta m inverse so and from this expression we are supposed to find alpha and beta as functions of theta okay that is the first part of the question after the first part we have to find the minimum of this function alpha of theta in this interval so we have to find the global minimum of that function in that interval and we have to find the minimum of beta of theta in that interval so we have to find the global minimum of beta okay in that interval so when you look at this uh, you might be wondering whether you need to find the inverse of m and so on and so but there is an easier way to do it and that is using what is called the cayley hamilton theorem so cayley hamilton theorem Cayley Hamilton theorem. So I will quickly tell you what the theorem is. Suppose you have a square matrix A. Suppose you have a square matrix A. Okay. And you take some scalar lambda and find A minus lambda i. And find the determinant of this. A minus lambda i, the determinant of this matrix. This quantity this is going to be a polynomial in lambda depending on the order of size of a this will be a polynomial with the corresponding degree okay say for example a is equal to a b c d so let's consider a 2 by 2 matrix let's consider a 2 by 2 matrix so this is a theory part after uh, explaining this theory i'll tell you how to solve this question so this is a very important concept you should be knowing this because it's a frequently asked thing especially in j advanced so if i have a matrix a 2 by 2 matrix what will be a minus lambda i a minus lambda i is going to be the matrix a minus lambda b c d minus lambda now if i take the determinant of this matrix so determinant of a minus lambda this is going to be a polynomial so it is 2 by 2 matrix so it is going to be a second degree polynomial in lambda if a is a 3 by 3 matrix it will be a third degree polynomial in lambda so in this case it will be a minus lambda into d minus lambda minus bc so this expression is lambda square minus lambda into a plus d plus ad minus bc so that is our determinant of a minus lambda this is a polynomial of lambda okay okay this is called the characteristic characteristic polynomial polynomial of the matrix a this is called the characteristic polynomial of the matrix a now this is the characteristic polyno polynomial if i put p of lambda is equal to 0 this is called the characteristic equation this is called the characteristic equation okay so far so good okay so far what we have done we have taken a matrix we have found out the determinant of a minus lambda i for some scalar lambda and that will come out as a polynomial in lambda and if we equate it to zero you're going to get a polynomial equation and that is what we are going to call as its characteristic equation that is fine right now 
What does Kelly Hamilton theorem say? This is an advanced level concept, so I'm not going to prove it, but you will learn in your linear algebra classes in higher classes. Okay. So what does Kelly Hamilton theorem say? Kelly Hamilton theorem says that every square matrix satisfies its own characteristic equation. So for example, so what does it say? If in this characteristic equation, instead of lambda, this is an equation in lambda, Kelly Hamilton theorem says that every square matrix satisfies its own characteristic equation. So instead of the variable lambda, if I put A, it will give you instead of 0, it will be O. Okay, O means the null matrix of appropriate size. Now, for the 2 by 2 case, our characteristic equation is our characteristic equation was a uh, sorry lambda square minus a plus d into lambda plus a d minus b c. Now, according to this is equal to zero is the characteristic equation. Now, according to Cayley Hamilton theorem, instead of lambda, you can substitute a and that will still be satisfied. So we have a squared minus a plus d times a plus a d minus b c you have to make it appropriate you have to make it of appropriate size so multiply with i equal to o so this will be the case for 2 by 2 matrix so this will be the case for 2 by 2 matrix this is the case for 2 by 2 matrix for 3 by 3 it will be a cubic expression in terms of a okay now and one more thing you need to note that a plus d is nothing but trace of a. So you can remember it in this way. This is determinant of a. Okay. a square minus trace of a times a plus determinant of a times i is equal to o. Okay. Also, one more thing for 2 by 2 matrix it is also important that you remember you remember determinant of a is a d minus b c and a inverse is nothing but 1 by a d minus b c that is determinant times adjoint and adjoint is obtained as for the principal diagonal you swap the elements okay and for the other other element you put negative sign okay so this is also a shortcut remember this remember this thing also remember this thing okay a square minus trace of a plus determinant of a times i is equal to o and from this we can find an expression for a inverse if a inverse exists you can multiply with a inverse if you multiply with a inverse you have a minus trace of a times i plus determinant of a times a inverse is equal to o. So we have another expression which is a is equal to a is going to be trace of a times i minus determinant of a times a inverse a is equal to trace of a times i minus determinant of a times a inverse. So this is the result you have to directly remember from Cayley Hamilton theorem. So if you can remember this, if you know this result already, okay, this question can be done very easily as in you, have, you don't have to worry about finding the inverse of the matrix. Already it has complicated expression. So you don't have to worry about finding inverse of this matrix. So you just apply this. So A is equal to trace of A times I minus determinant of A times A inverse. Okay, you just compare it with this thing. We have M is equal to alpha times I plus beta times M inverse. Alpha times I. M is equal to alpha times I plus beta times M inverse. This is what is given on the question. So from this expression, it is very easy. You have alpha is equal to trace of m. Beta is equal to minus determinant of m. So if you know Cayley-Hamilton theorem, this part is very simple. 
in 30 seconds you can write alpha is equal to trace of m beta is equal to minus determinant of m and next part involves trigonometric optimization you have to find the minimum value of the trigonometric function in that interval so that is the idea so this part is clear alpha is trace of m so in this question we have alpha is equal to trace of m so that is going to be sine power 4 theta plus cos power 4 theta and this quantity is this is in the form a squared plus b squared where a is equal to sine square theta b is equal to cos square theta so a squared plus b squared is a plus b whole squared minus 2ab so this will be 1 minus 2 sine square theta cos square theta So this is going to be 1 minus, this will be sine squared 2 theta divided by 2. Now we have to find the minimum value of this quantity. Okay, do not go for calculus. When you have trigonometric optimization, do not use calculus. Use properties of the trigonometric functions itself. So alpha star is going to be the minimum value. So we have something subtracted from 1. This quantity and their expression will be minimum when this expression is maximum and the maximum value of this expression is going to be 1 by 2 when the sine square 2 theta takes maximum value of 1. So it is 1 minus 1 by 2 that is 1 by 2. Okay. So 1 by 2 is what we get for alpha star. 1 by 2 is what we get for alpha star. Now similarly we have to find beta and beta star and beta we already saw that it is minus determinant of m. Minus determinant of m is the value of beta. Beta is equal to minus of determinant of m. Determinant of m is going to be sin power 4 theta into cos power 4 theta plus 1 plus sin square theta into 1 plus cos square theta. So this will be minus of sine power 4 theta cos power 4 theta plus this is 1 plus sine squared theta plus cos squared theta plus sine squared theta into cos squared theta. So this is going to be if you put the sin square theta into cos square theta as t this expression is minus of t square plus 2 plus t okay and of course we have made a substitution sin square theta into cos square theta is equal to t and of course when you make a substitution you have to write, write the range of the substituted variable okay so this t is nothing but sine power 4 theta by 4 and within the given interval this varies between 0 and 1 by 4 0 and 1 by 4 now to find the minimum or maximum of this expression okay this is a parabola okay you, there is a direct result for parabola but in this case we don't have the entire parabola because the domain is not the at set entire set of real numbers domain is just 0 to 1 by 4 we just have a small piece of the parabola we just have a small piece of the parabola so instead of using the formula directly formula correspond to the vertex of the parabola but we are we are not sure whether the vertex falls into this interval that is one thing secondly we have to find the global maximum global minima so we have to look at the uh, expression using completion of squares so let's use completion of squares Let's use completion of squares. So this quantity is going to be minus of this will be t plus half the whole square minus 1 by 4 plus 2. So that will be 7, min, 7 by 4 minus t plus half the whole square. And this quantity is minimum. The entire quantity is minimum when this expression is maximum. And this expression is maximum when t is equal to 1 by 4. See t is equal to 1 by 4. So beta star is going to be 7 by 4 minus 1 by 4 plus half the whole square. So that is 7 by 4 
minus 9 divided by 16. So that will be 28 minus 9 divided by 16. 20, sorry, it's minus 7 by 4 here. Minus 7 by 4. I think I made a mistake. It's minus 7. So minus 28. So this quantity is minus 37 divided by 16. Now we have to find alpha star plus beta star. Alpha star plus beta star is going to be half minus 37 by 16. So this will be uh, this is 8 minus 37 divided by 16. So it is minus 29 by 16. Minus 29 by 16 is our answer. Minus 29 by 16, yes. Minus 29 by 16 is the answer. It's a very easy question. Okay, this involves only straightforward stuff, but it's a lengthy problem. It will be lengthier if you go by the normal approach of finding alpha and beta. Instead, you should be able to use Cayley-Hamilton theorem. Okay, then.